But we begin with a story today that I find intriguing and odd. And I wrote about it today at townhall.com. And if you're intrigued like I am, you can go and read about it on the tip sheet. President Joe Biden has exhibited throughout his entire adult life a penchant. It's almost, I might say, pathological to lie or embellish or exaggerate details about his life and his biography. Now, most politicians fib and exaggerate. That's a fact of life. And I'm not talking here about policy or political lies. We address those all the time. For instance, Joe Biden lies about his tax plan and the implications of what he wants to do on tax hikes. We correct the record. He's not telling the truth. He lied about Afghanistan and the conditions under which we would or would not withdraw all American troops. Those are consequential falsehoods. There are also political lies. For example, NBC News this week had a story that we discussed at length on the show about the chaos and divisions inside the White House. And one minor detail was that Biden gets regularly, at least weekly, briefed on polling. And Biden had said publicly that he doesn't read the polls at all. He said, that's not a joke. Not a joke, folks. No, it's just a lie. Of course he reads the polls. He's actually obsessed over the polls if you read this NBC News story. Those are all, for better or for worse, I'm not defending them at all. We, you know, drill down on them here. Run of the mill, common lies or shading of the truth or untruths or tall tales for political reasons that you see from various political actors on the regular. Republican, Democrat across the board. What I'm talking about here is different. It's particularly shameless. And I would say, above all else, it's really weird. It's really weird how Joe Biden over and over and over again just makes things up about things that he has done in his life, things that have happened to him in his life, things that are just not true. What sparked this whole thought, which catalyzed the piece that I've written at townhall.com, sort of the kickoff to this, was over the long weekend, the president gave the commencement address at the Naval Academy. And at the very beginning of his speech, he told a quick anecdote about his own life and his own connection to the Naval Academy in Annapolis, Maryland. Cut 29, here's the very short snippet. I was appointed to the Academy in 1965 by a senator who I was running against in 1972. And he went on to tell this story about how he didn't end up going to Annapolis, but if he had, he would have been deployed and he couldn't have run against this senator in 1972. He wouldn't have won because he's been in Washington, most of it in the U.S. Senate for decades, as we all know. And some political reporters who were watching the speech said, gosh, that's a story we haven't heard before. And maybe they didn't hear it before because it's not true. It can't be true. At the very least, Biden misremembered or confused the dates. It could not have been 1965. The terminology of being appointed to the Naval Academy, people have disputed that, saying, no, that is absolutely not what happened here. It's not stolen valor, but it's sort of adjacent to that. It's in the neighborhood. He went on to the University of Delaware instead, and he told that story, but he did not get appointed to the Naval Academy in 1965. It just didn't happen. Now, that might seem like a very small thing. It's certainly not the most important thing happening in America right now, but it feeds into this pattern. These serial embellishments or untruths from this man. Here are two more examples of quite a few. Some people might lie on the topic of getting arrested by lying that they did not get arrested in order to get a job or what have you. Joe Biden, on multiple occasions, has lied that he did get arrested. 
when in fact he was not arrested. For example, he said several times that he was arrested with Nelson Mandela in apartheid South Africa. Here's an example, cut 30. This day, 30 years ago, Nelson Mandela walked out of prison and entered into discussions about apartheid. I had the great honor of meeting him. I had the great honor of being arrested with our UN ambassador on the streets of Soweto trying to get to see him on Robbins Island. Now, this is the story that he told on the campaign multiple times, that he got arrested while in South Africa visiting Mandela because he was down for the cause, Joe Biden. So some fact checkers looked into it. And the Washington Post called the claim ridiculous and gave him four Pinocchios. And eventually he had to back off saying, well, what I meant was I got briefly separated. Separated is not the same word as arrested. Obviously, we all understand that. He used the word arrested for extra emphasis and power, even though it wasn't true. In Cut 39, he also bragged that he was arrested during the civil rights movement in the United States. Listen. Because I'm so damn old, I was there as well. <laughs> they think I'm kidding, man. <laughs> Seems like yesterday, the first time I got arrested. Anyway. And he told that story a couple times. Got arrested during the civil rights era. Didn't happen. Four more Pinocchios. We're up to eight Pinocchios on these arrest stories from the Washington Post. Even PolitiFact, which is a Democrat-aligned fact checker, called that one false. Then the list goes on to pettier stuff. Biden talked about how much he enjoyed teaching when he was a professor at the University of Pennsylvania. In fact, he was paid a million dollars for that position. He never taught a class. That one at least has some semblance of truth to it. Others, not so much. Biden said he was a truck driver professionally at one point in his life. Cut 33. I used to drive a tractor trailer. Oh, and, uh, awesome. And so I know a little bit about driving big trucks. No, oh, that's great. But um, anyway, it's uh, I only did it for part of a summer. Oh, okay. But I got my license to do it. He did this job for part of a summer, got his license as a truck driver. Awesome, says the guy who's talking to. He's pushing an infrastructure package in this context. So he wants to say, like, he's around these blue-collar people. I was a truck driver. Oh, wow. There's no record that he was ever a truck driver. And ask for any specifics or details or proof, there has been none offered. PolitiFact, again, left-leaning PolitiFact, called that claim false. Here's another strange one. Again, weird. You can call it shameless. You can call it pathological. I've used those adjectives as well. More than anything to me, it is weird. Biden was talking about Idaho and how he interviewed for his first job ever in Idaho. Cut 34. I got a, I, my first job offer where I wanted my wife, deceased wife and I wanted to move to Idaho because we think not a joke. It's such a beautiful, beautiful state. And I interviewed for a job with Boise Cascade. He likes to say not a joke, which might be the tip off that whatever he's saying isn't true. Someone looked into this. They asked the company, which had to then put out a statement saying we have no record of President Biden and his application or of him having worked for the company. We checked the system internally, turned up nothing. On a more serious note, you might recall that in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, in 2018, there was a horrible shooting at the Tree of Life Synagogue in Pittsburgh. A bigot went in to kill as many Jews as he could. Subsequently, President Biden was talking about the time that he remembered going to visit the Tree of Life Synagogue after that terrible event, cut 35. I remember spending time at the, you know, uh, go, going to uh, the, uh, you know, the Tree of Life synagogue, speaking with them. It just, it just is amazing these things are happening. I remember spending time going to the Tree of Life synagogue. New York Post looked into it. The executive director of the synagogue said that Biden had not visited in the nearly three years since the anti-Semitic attack took place. So this story came out in 2021. 
They asked, are you sure? Was Biden ever here? Was he ever at this house of worship? And the executive director responded, quote, with a firm no. So there's an invented memory, or at least a story that he decided to tell. To, I guess, make things more emotional, connect more. The details being almost ancillary in terms of like the truthfulness of them. This one I find disconcerting. We know that Biden has grieved loved ones in his life. He has experienced traumatic loss. His son, Bo, before that, his first wife and his young daughter in an accident. There's no questioning that. That happened. That is real. He has drawn on that experience to comfort other people who were hurting. I think that's admirable. But for many years, Biden would tell the story about that accident with a villain, the truck driver who was involved. And he would say that the driver was drunk. That turned out to be absolutely false and incorrect. According to the police department, the police report, local officials, a judge weighed in saying, no, this was not a drunk driving situation. In fact, Biden's former wife accidentally drove into the path of the truck. It was a terrible accident. The guy was not drunk. There were no charges filed. But over and over again for years, Biden called the guy a drunk driver. And this man's family has been desperately asking him to stop. Stop tarnishing and smearing the legacy of our dad or husband or uncle, that sort of thing. But Biden said it over and over again for dramatic effect. Why do you have to embellish anything about something that sad already? Then there was, of course, the whole plagiarism scandal, which derailed Biden's first presidential run of three, 1988. He had plagiarized a British politician's speech, which then revealed that he had plagiarized a few other speeches while he was a politician. Then eventually he was forced to admit that he plagiarized pages worth of material when he was in law school. And the whole thing just sort of cascaded. He was very touchy about this. When people would bring it up, he angrily denied it until he couldn't anymore. And at one point, I don't know if you've ever seen this clip. It is wild. Someone asked him a question on the campaign trail about this and sort of suggested that maybe Joe Biden isn't that bright. And Biden bristled and got very, very defensive and went on this whole long rant about how smart he is and all the accolades academically that he had earned through the years, one after another. And it kind of sounds impressive. So first you'll hear Biden yelling at this guy about how smart he is. And then at the end of the clip, you will hear local and national news reports about the veracity of what Biden actually said in his boasting. Again, this clip, if you've never seen it, is absolutely amazing. Cut 37. I went to law school on a full academic scholarship, the only one in my in my class uh, to have a full academic scholarship. Went back to law school and, in fact, ended up in the top half of my class. I was the outstanding student in the political science department at the end of my year. I graduated with three degrees from undergraduate school and 165 credits, only 823 credits. Biden now concedes he did not graduate in the top half of his law school class that he does not have three degrees from college, and that he was not named outstanding political science student in college. Newsweek says Biden actually went to school on a half scholarship, ended up near the bottom of his class, and won only one degree, not three. Joe Biden ranked 76th in a class of 85 at the University of Syracuse Law School. Did he say a single thing that was true? I mean, he was rattling them off like he had them memorized, all these great things he had done, and it was just... Top to bottom, start to finish, false, made up, wrong, which only deepened his problem. Repeatedly, serially through the years he has done this. And all it did was make him a mainstay in the U.S. Senate and then vice president of the United States and then president of the United States campaigning on a platform of truth compared to the last guy. Say what you will about Joe Biden or his policies. He should have never been taken seriously on the honesty front for just some of the reasons that we have just recapitulated for you. It is taken together amazing. And as I say, more than anything else, super, super 
weird. It's the Guy Benson Show. We'll be right back. 